All right, here we are with part two of our video. So here we go. Uh, number 25, identify the property that justifies the statement below. Uh, look, if A is B and uh, you have A minus C is B minus C, well, you, clearly you're subtracting from both sides. So that is just the subtraction property of equality. Okay. Subtraction property of equality. I feel like my handwriting is getting worse on this thing, but here we go. All right, it says name three rays in the diagram. Well, you got ray EF. This is insultingly easy, right? Uh, EG, arrow goes in the direction of the ray, and EH. Whoosh, done. There they be. All right, good enough. Uh, after several years of gardening, Mary made the observation every rose has its thorn. I feel like we've seen this before. Uh, all roses have thorns. Is it a valid conjecture and how can it be tested? Can it be proven? Ooh. Uh, so again, this is a conjecture. Um, is this a valid conjecture? How can it be tested? Well, the only way to test this conjecture is to uh, really test it to be false. You can't really prove unless you can find every rose in the world. So completely impossible. Can it be proven? No, it cannot be proven because there's no way you can study that. So uh, what she's doing here is called inductive reasoning. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's an interesting uh, conjecture, um, but it, and it is valid, right? She didn't see anything that was wrong. So a valid conjecture, but unfortunately cannot be proven. Okay, so yes, valid. Um, tested by looking at every rose, which means it can't be proven. Can be disproven pretty quickly, but not uh, proven. All right, determine whether the statement below is true or false. If it's false, explain your reasoning, okay? So if, so here's my P and my Q. So there's P, then Q. So if the absolute value is three, then X must have been three. And of course, it's false because you can make something true here. You want true? and false for the second part. If, then, true goes to false. In other words, it's true here, something like x is negative three. If x was negative three, the absolute value is three. So that's true for the first part, false for the second part. So this is your counterexample, and you're good. So it's false. All right, find a counterexample to the conjecture below. Again, look for things that are true here, an animal that has stripes, but false here. And it says find a counterexample, you're literally thinking of a thing that has stripes. And I'm gonna get creative here, I'm gonna say a tiger shark. Okay, uh, but you could have said anything that has stripes but is not a zebra, so it's kinda easy. Um, number I don't know, I always like to think of interesting examples, so feel free to, uh, hopefully you come up with a good counterexample yourself. Nemo, you could use Nemo. Um, all right, number 30, um, identify the hypothesis and conclusion. So again, uh, then to write the negation of each. Negation, is, so this is P and this is Q. You just want the negation of each. So first of all, you identify the hypothesis. So this is your hypothesis, that's P. This is your conclusion, that's Q, and then write the negation of each. So if you don't break it, I don't know what I'm writing, I could just say it. If you don't break it, then you don't have, oops, have to buy it. Cannot write on this thing anymore. Oops, I just totally deleted my whole thing. <laughs> Let's see if it's all still there. There we go. Uh, there you don't. Then you don't have to buy the thing. Okay. All right. So that's all it is. Negation. What does it mean? That's not P goes to not Q. And just put nos in front of the verbs, and you're good. Or uh, a not or a no in front of that one. In front of the verbs. All right. Number 31, it says a right triangle, angle X is 42. The right angle is at Z, what's the measure of Y? Well, 
if you know, if you remember this, it's a right triangle. That means the other two, so one of them is 90. So this is 90. That's 42. They all have to, up to add up to 180, or y and x are complementary. So angle x plus the measure of angle y equals 90. They're complementary angles. There are other angles in the triangle. You don't have to draw a picture on this one. All right. This is 42 degrees. And just subtract away. And so then the measure of angle y equals 48 degrees. Good stuff. Find the value of x in the triangle below. Give your answer in simplified radical form. Okay, this is really easy later on when I give you a little theorem or a little uh, formula for this. Uh, but for now, we'll just use Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus 6 squared equals our hypotenuse, or x squared. Uh, 6 squared is 36. Okay, 36 and 36 is 72. Okay as x squared. All right, now at this point, you're like, hey, how do I get it in simplified radical form? Because radical 72 is a little too clunky. So one way to do that, and I'll, when you get to algebra 2, I'll show you a really fun way to do this. Uh, but how do you break down se uh, 72? Look for perfect squares that divide in. So, well, this is made of two 36s, so I know this is 36 times 2. And so when you write it like this, this would be 36 times radical 2, you're allowed to do that. And this is just 6 rad 2. Okay. 6 rad 2. Good stuff. So much fun. All right, meters if you're looking for units. All right, sketch a quadrilateral based on the description below. All right, so I've got a quadrilateral. We're going to sketch it. Each side measures 9 meters. And that's all. That's all they give us. All right, so sketch a quadrilateral. Uh, okay, so we're just going to sketch it. And all you know is that all the sides are nine, and it could be a square, or it could be just a rhombus. It could be any kind of quadrilateral. All right, determine the measure of each exterior angle for a regular octagon. What is the measure of an exterior angle? So here's the thing with exterior angles, and this is, I always remember this, I never remember the other one. Um, this is the, the easy one to me. Uh, so to determine the exterior angles, all the exterior angles add up to 360, no matter what shape you have. So if you have like a, um, a pentagon, or hexagon like I'm drawing, all of the exterior angles you draw Draw them off the edges like that. Just extend the side out. All of those exterior angles, this one plus 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 this one, plus this one equals 360. Okay? So all that equals 360. So just divide it by 6 and you're good. So in the case of an octagon, draw 8 sides. You'll have 8 ways that 360 is cut up. And so it's just 360 divided by 8, which, of course, we all know... Um, is 45. Okay, so each of those must be 45 degrees for a octagon. This was a hexagon, so don't use that as your example, but you get the idea. Okay, 45 degrees. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. For the following statements, use the law of detachments. Detachments, easy. That's when they give you P goes to Q as a rule. Then they say, with a specific example, they say, hey, P just happened. What can you conclude? That Q happens. So 34 ends in the even number. Then you say, therefore. Make sure you include the therefore. OK? Um, so therefore, it, 34, which is the it, can be evenly divided by 2. OK? So. That's, that's what law of detachment says. Hey, P just happened, so therefore, you just say therefore, and then whatever Q is, and you're good. Okay. Um, area of a regular blanket is 30 square feet. The blanket's length is that, What is and the width is that. Okay, so it's kind of like the other one. 
Um, I'm going to kind of skip on. I'll just talk through the justifications here for you, but you know what to do. So it's going to be um, A equals, and it's going to be uh, uh, length times width. Yeah, it's a lot like the other one. So this is 30 equals 3x plus 7 times 3x. And we'll just do 9x squared plus 21x equals 30. Subtract 30 from both sides. So 0 equals 9x squared plus 21x minus 30. So I just subtracted 30 from both sides. All right, and, and if I was writing the justification for each of these, it's over here, this would be area of a rectangle. Okay, the second step would be um, givens. Okay, those values were given. The next step would be um, multiply, uh, simplify actually is what they would say. Simplify. Okay, the next step would be subtraction property. I subtracted 30 from both sides. Subtraction property of equality. And then as we go down here, and I'll keep, I'll finish this up for you, we're going to factor this side. And that's technically a simplify thing, but before we do that, let me do GCF. What divides out of everything here? Well, let's see, definitely a 3. So let's take a 3 out of everybody. Always look for GCFs if you can. And we do it on both sides, right? Both sides for, to keep it uh, straight. So this is going to be the division property. Okay, once we divide, we'll have uh, zero still here, and this will be three x squared uh, plus seven x minus 10. Now let's factor those real quick. And I get a couple of factors um, in there. Let's see, three x and 10, and then x minus one. Okay, if you don't know how to factor, just use guess and check and use three and uh, three x and x will give you three x squared and 10 and one will give you negative 10 and check your O and your I when you FOIL. All right, so now just the last step is three x plus 10 equals zero or, oops, keep writing it up, um, or x minus one equals zero. And we'll subtract 10 and divide by 3. So this is negative 10 over 3. Okay, add 1. So this is x equals 1. Now this one doesn't make any sense. You can't have a negative length. So this is the only one I really care about. So just plug it in. This is 3 times 1 plus 7 is your length. And so the length is 10. Okay, and then your width when you plug it in is going to be 3 times x, so that's just 1. No, 3, excuse me. 1 times um, 3. So there we go. 10 and 3. So much fun. All right, and if you continue these steps down, you'd be saying, hey, this is uh, um, factoring, so this is just a simplify step because you're not moving things across the equal sign. Um, and this is um, zero product property, which basically means you're, um, uh, when two things are multiplied to make zero, one must be zero. That's the zero product property. And the last one, you could just say it's reject negatives because of the context of the problem. All right, what is the congruent statement for the two triangles below? All this means is triangle ABC is congruent to triangle and then do the same order. Make sure if you want A, B, C, that means you do the same order in the other one. So this would be X, Y, Z. That's all there is to that one. When they're asking this stuff here, that's all they're wanting to, do, to you to write is just that they are congruent to each other. And the reason is, uh, or the, there's no reason to it. You don't have to justify it. It's already shown. But just make sure you go in the same order that the angles are ordered there in the sides. Okay. Identify a central angle, a minor arc, a major arc, and a semicircle in M. So there's a lot of options for this one, but I'll just do a single example. A central angle goes to the center, so 
angle L, oops, L, M, O. Okay, so there's that one. Um, a minor arc would be arc L, O. Um, all right, a major arc would be, let's see, L, K, O. Okay, it's got to go over 180, okay. And the semicircle, the last one, is going to be semicircle, just use L, N, or L, O, N, if you want to do it that way. Three always makes it a little more clear. Okay, so if you have three points, or L, K, N, it would have been fine as well. Okay, um, two points, you could be talking about two different things, so it's better to use three on a major or semicircle. Okay, cool, so fun. All right, just a couple more guys, let's, let's do this thing. Number 39er, 39er. Uh, so we're gonna go through our steps here and they gave us all the proof, we just gotta fill in the blanks here. So uh, for what reason can we say uh, number two, how do I know that one and two add up to 180? Uh, because of this statement up here, one is supplementary to two, uh, therefore one plus two makes 180. That's the definition of supplementary. Supplementary. So the definition of supplementary is that they add up to 180. Okay, so just recognize that that's what property they're using. All right, the, the third one, what do they do on that one? Angles one and two are equal to three and two. Well, look at that here. It's got, uh, it says this one's equal to 180 and this one's equal to 180, so therefore they're equal to each other. Now for this one, I would accept the substitution or you could use the transitive property. This one's equal to 180 and this one's equal to 180, so they're equal to each other. Okay, substitution or transitive property. All right, now for this next one, notice what they're doing here. They're saying, hey, I'm going to subtract this uh, angle two from both sides here. Which property of equality is that? That's subtraction. Okay. And then the next step is to just simplify that. And then the very last step, how do I know that their measures, if their measures are the same, it actually shouldn't have M here. It should just say angle one and angle three, because that otherwise you're not finishing the proof here. Angle one and angle three, how do you know uh, they're are congruent? That's the definition of congruence. Okay, definition of congruence. All right, last one, here we go. What is the included side of angle A? So let's highlight that. And angle I in the figure, included side, of course, is the one that's in between them. So you gotta have that one there. And so it's simply A, I. Bam, all right. What's the included angle of I, K, and K, S? Okay, so let's highlight those. I, K, and K, S. That's the angle that they're describing there is this one right here. So that's just angle K. Okay, so angle K. And that's it, that's it. So there's just a few tough ones on here, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. Just gotta be patient, know your formulas, people, know your formulas. Um, and I think you're gonna be in good shape for this, uh, this test, okay? So keep working hard, appreciate you guys. Study hard and uh, rock that test for me.